What's good everybody? Oh man, the United Twins, it's a solo thing today. I wanna have a serious conversation, especially after the weekend. This is a big people talk, big people conversation, and sometimes, you know, Cappy can get a bit riled up. He can get, we, we could both get riled up and frustrated, but when he gets riled up, it's on a different level thing, you know what I mean? So, you know, I thought I'd come here, have this conversation, kind of sum up the weekend and where we go from here. If you haven't changed in terms of thinking that result against Leicester is unacceptable. I think after the transfer window, a lot of us came into the season thinking, yo, we could be legit title contenders. But there were always those reserves ar around the team, how we played. Reservations because the, of the past, of the past few years. There's always been some kind of hurdle that we've tripped up in the last minute, whether it be, you know, the Europa League final last year. Numerous semi-finals where we looked like, oh my God, we're just about to get above the hump. And then we get knocked straight down, sniper settings, boom, bow. And it's like... It's, it, it, it's, it's disappointing. But, you know, going back to the point, that result against Leicester is unacceptable. This is a tough run, but if you're a Manchester United manager, if you are a team that are title contenders, you shouldn't be looking at these fixtures with fear. You should actually be embracing those fixtures and you should be on the training pitch every day, getting ready for those fixtures to make sure that you put yourself in the best position to win, not draw, not lose. As simple as that, because that's what Manchester United do. Now, I wanted to answer the question, does it make sense sacking Ole now? For me, there's always context to this. And I consider past managerial reigns. I consider what's above Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at, the moment, at this moment of time. Now... Does it make sense sacking Ole? For me, sacking Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at this moment of time, uh, I know I'm going to get a bit of flack for it, but I'm not sure if that's the right decision. I am not sure. Look, I hear where people are coming from when they say, you know, you sack him now, get a better manager, and the team changes and suddenly you can have an effect like Thomas Tuchel had on Chelsea, where things turned around, they had a positive second half to the season and ended up going on to win the Champions League. I hear where those kind of people and those opinions are coming from, but I have to look at the situation at Manchester United and, you know, I don't know. You blame the manager, yes, but the players are somewhat to blame as well because I look at the way sometimes the players play and... You don't need coaching to exert energy, exert or show desire, show a want and a will to win. You know what I mean? We see moments of brilliance that doesn't come from coaching. So why can't you do that at a consistent rate? You don't. You can't coach desire. You can't coach effort on the pitch. You can't coach heart. You know what I mean? Playing for the badge. And for a lot of this season... Even last season, look, there have been them great patches under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer where we've had results back to back to back to back, wins, all that stuff. People are singing Ole's at the wheel. We're not there now. Some of it, of course, has to be pointed at the players because like I said, you don't coach desire, you don't coach heart and you don't coach effort. Three simple things that come from within. Those are intrinsic behaviours. And if you don't have it, you can't get it. It's as simple as that. We have an array of attacking talent. So we signed Cristiano Ronaldo in the summer. We should have knew what we signed up for. Of course, Ronaldo is one of the best players in the world still. But he has remodeled his game to what Cristiano was the last time he was at Manchester United. And even at Real Madrid. He is now a striker that predominantly, of course... He'll, he'll be involved in build-up play. But he wants the ball in the box. He'll find the areas because he's a top striker. He remodeled himself to be a top striker, to know the areas where he needs to be in order to score goals. And he does that brilliantly. You see what he does on international duty. You saw what he does in his first few games back at Manchester United. But unfortunately, we are a team, 
that does not get crosses in. There is still hesitancy when it comes to crossing in the ball. But Luke Shaw, he had a great season last year, but I have to say, from those performances, he's regressed. Aaron Wambisaka, we all know his hesitancy to put in a cross. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Most of the time he turns back. I would just love to see them, boom, whip it in. If you see someone in the box, don't even think about it. Just whip it, whip it in. And also, we have wingers that would rather drive in or take a shot first or most of the time rather than crossing in the ball. All he needs to really, really, really show the players and tell the players what he needs from them. Because, of course, players have their strengths. But if you have a guy like Ronaldo in the team, you need guys putting the ball into the box constantly. I remember watching the highlights from Portugal, and that's not even a full game. They know the assignment. Whip it into Ronaldo, and that brother creates chances. Having a guy like Ronaldo, if things don't turn around, we will regret signing Ronaldo. The club won't regret it because they just see shirt sales. They see the buzz he creates and the amount of followers he adds to the club. But I think us as fans will probably regret the club signing Cristiano Ronaldo if we're not going to get the best out of him. I want to speak about the Glazers more. You know, in the past few weeks, they've done things like sell shares for their own benefit, for their own benefit, really, to make more money. They have zero interest in improving the on-pitch affairs. And that's a fact. I don't care what anybody has to say about this transfer window. Anybody at all has to say about this transfer window. Because how many transfer windows have we truly seen something positive where we've all got the players that either the manager wanted and what we needed? So don't be blinded by it. And one thing I have to say is, in the summer, all the heat is on the Glazers. Now, fair enough, we're playing games. So that's the, the easiest thing to throw shade at. But you need to keep the heat up on the Glazers within the season as well. If you truly want change, it has to start from the top. You hire a new manager now, great. Maybe the... The, the performances on the pitch will improve. Maybe the situation, the organisation will improve. But if something goes wrong, the Glazers still ultimately have the power to do whatever they want. Make those decisions. And more times than not, those decisions are wrong. But right for them, because it makes them money. That is the end all for them. That is what they want to do. Make money. Of course, you have to consider what football is now. Football is more of a business than it is a sport. In order to become one of the best teams, you need to be making a lot of money. But that doesn't mean that you have to neglect what's happening on the pitch. Because them neglecting what's happening on the pitch is also losing them a lot of money as well. And I don't think they recognise that. But they're probably content with what they're making. Because anyway, Manchester United makes money. One of the richest teams in the world for a reason. We are their bank. The Bank of United, literally. That game on Sunday was weird. The feeling after that game, during that game, it was so weird. The fan base, everything, it just seemed like everything took a turn for the worse. And, you know, where do we go from now? We have Atalanta on Wednesday, Liverpool on the weekend. I'm sorry, but we must win. We must win games. It's early in the season. We're five points off. I think... Of course we can be title contenders, but me being a realist, I wouldn't tip ourselves for the title. I said this season we would finish third, and I'm, I am mean, I think that's a realistic thing for us to finish third this season. We could even finish lower, hopefully not, but I tipped us to finish third. And what do I want out of this season? Now, you guys' answers may be different. Let me know in the comment section below. But what I want from this season is not just a trophy, a sight of an improved system that provides consistency. Ever since Sir Alex Ferguson left, think about it. The consistency of the team has dipped drastically. Even in David Moyes' first season, that's where it all started. The consistency, the consistency. And I feel like, once again, it's a from top to bottom thing. If you're not enforcing the United DNA, if you're not enforcing a culture that keeps everybody in check, 
then everybody's going to be running loose like headless chickens. Don't know where to go, bumping into walls, everything. Somebody needs to be that enforcer. Somebody that keeps people in check. Stops this, you know, misbehaving foolishness. Stops these comments when people go on international duty. People are fully focused on Manchester United. Fully focused on winning and fully focused on being the best possible footballer, best possible manager they can be. But what I want out of this season, I want a trophy for sure. We need to make that step up and we need a good trophy. Whether that be an FA Cup, whether that be a Carabao Cup. I don't know. Champions League is a bit far-fetched. Premier League is a bit far-fetched, but anything can happen. We need a trophy or trophies. I also want to be realistic and say I want to see an improved system. The current system we're playing in is not good enough. It doesn't allow our players to thrive. It doesn't allow the players or the team as a whole to play like a team. Ole, the coaching staff, the players need to work on that and you need to pull your weight because I will say this, if the bad results continue and I don't care what opponent it is, if the bad results continue, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to be in big trouble and he needs to notice that and he needs to be able to now adapt to the situation, whether it's a formation change, getting another coach in to have a, a different point of view different or ways or different ways to play that may switch it up for us and provide something fresh. Manchester United right now are in the mud from top to bottom and we need to step out of that mud, pick our faces up and, and improve. Manchester United was built on winning. Their legacy is built on winning. When I became a United fan, they were in the peak of their abilities when it came to winning trophies, winning big football games, performing week in, week out and making the fans pleased, happy and excited to show up to Old Trafford or even away grounds. They wouldn't accept these results because it rarely happened. So why should we? And some of those fans are still watching United to this day. So why should you accept those results? Fine margins isn't good enough. That's not what Manchester United is about. We're about winning. No draws, no losses. It's as simple as that. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, everything free, no need for a criminal, mind control, all subliminal, Twitter, TikTok, Insta, digital, join this crew, follow my Twitch and I might rate you, if you pass through ends in this my gang, bust down doors or phase right through.